So uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And my today's talk is on early GDM. Uh, now it's a word of uh, internet and uh, and internet uh, and 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 social media. And uh, now we call it as eGDM. And we also have come out with something like CGDM. So we have a lot of newer terminology as per the as per as as we progress with this newer generations. My humble thanks and congratulations to Bansi Bhai, Rutul, Dharmendra and the team of uh, PSG. There is no conflict of interest for this particular talk. We will have an introduction, evolution of uh, hypoglycemia and pregnancy, how it evolved from, uh, from the traditional uh, pregnancy diabetes to, uh, to the GDM and then uh, now talk about, talk about eGDM uh, and then of course the clinical implication, the carry home message. The diabetes appeared in the patient along with the pregnancy and at the very same time while the pregnancy lasted, it lasted. As the pregnancy developed, it developed and it terminated soon after the pregnancy. This is possibly the first mention in 1824, almost 200 years from now, that, uh, that pregnancy diabetes or GDM was actually indirectly recognized. And this is the paper which, was, uh, which, is, uh, which mentions about the 1824 diagnosis of GDM. Before uh, 1920, before the discovery of insulin, uh, most of the pregnancies who are pre-gestational or those who are diagnosed even gestational diabetes, they used to be terminated by saying that if you have pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes, it's unlikely to, ha to you to have a pregnancy and it used to be, they used to adv advise termination of pregnancy. By 1935, almost 10 years from the in introduction of insulin, the perinatal mortality has dropped to 25 uh, to 25% and then uh, almost 63%. Now when we talk about pre-gestational diabetes, I always uh, put this particular slide because we are going to compare early GDM, pre-GDM. That pregnancy just happens. If it is less than 20 years of age, almost 82% of the pregnancies are unplanned pregnancies. When it's around 30, it's around 40%. So 40 to 80% of the pregnancies are unplanned. And when we talk about pre-gestational type 1 diabetes, most of these girls are going to be between 20s and 30s. And uh, this can happen even to the women. And it, it's the Western data says only 26% only of the pregnancies are planned. So we as a clinician, when face a person coming to you with 9.5 HbA1c with ANC of say 18 weeks or 20 weeks, it becomes a big challenge for all of us to take care of. We have already heard two of the talks where we understood that hyperglycemia in the first trimester can affect the organogenesis and the same is going to happen with all type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes who are becoming pregnant. If, if they are unplanned, then it is going to be a challenging situation. So overlapping this particular issue of early GDM and GDM and, and, and the pre-gestational diabetes, this is a very, very important slide for all of you. It is not just the epidemiology here. The age of onset of diabetes and the pre-diabetes is declining while the age of childbearing is increasing. Most of us when we are born, our mothers were in less than 25 years of age. But now the average age of pregnancy in India or even abroad is around 30 or 28 or 30. And that becomes an additional challenge that diabetes, the age on, of onset of diabetes is reducing and the age of childbearing age is, is increasing. And that's why you are going to have more and more number of these pre-gestational diabetes which, who have never ever tested their blood glucose early in life. And raise, please raise your hand if any one of you, including me, have tested our blood glucose before 30 years of age. How do you expect a woman to do that? And that is what is a challenge. There's an then increased risk, increased obesity in the women uh, of reproductive age, which is again a risk factor for diabetes in a, during the uh, GDM as well as the pre-gestational diabetes, which might remain uncontrolled, undiagnosed earlier. Now, if you just define GDM over diabetes and early GDM, GDM, as we know, I feel we have heard this. It refers to hyperglycemia diagnosed between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy by the standard criteria. And they, some of the authors, they call it a CGDM, conventional GDM. And uh, it could be DIPSI diagnosed or it could be other diagnostic criteria. Overt diabetes means it has been diagnosed for the first time, but it was never tested uh, earlier. And this matches the criteria of diagnosis of a non-diabetic, uh, the, the, the non-pregnant diabetes. That means fasting 26 
योर अर्ली स्पीकर एसेट फास्टिंग वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स रैंडम और पोस्ट ग्लूकोज मोर देन टू हंड्रेड एच बी एवं सी ऑफ मोर देन सिक्स पॉइंट फोर सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव दे आर ऑल डायग्नोस्टिक ऑफ द प्री एग्जिस्टिंग डायबिटीज दैट्स कॉल्ड इज ओवर डायबिटीज और डायबिटीज इन प्रेगनेंसी दैट इज डिप एंड द अर्ली जी डी एम इज ई जी डी एम रिफर्स टू अ इंटरमीडिएट डिग्रीज ऑफ हाइपर ग्लैसीमिया डिटेक्टेड बिफोर ट्वेंटी फोर वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी डेट फुलफिल्स द क्राइटेरिया ऑफ सी सी जी डी एम बट इट इट इज इट इज क्लासिकली कमिंग टू एस जी डी एम वेर यू हैव वन फोर्टी टू वन नाइनटी नाइन एच बी एवं सी इज ऑल्सो लेस देन सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड इट इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ जी डी एम बट इट इज डायग्नोज बिफोर ट्वेंटी फोर वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी नो एवरी वन शुड नो जी डी एम इज अ स्ट्रेस टेस्ट फॉर बीटा सेल्स एंड दिस दो बीटा सेल्स हु फेल टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस स्ट्रेस टेस्ट दे बिकम ग्लूकोज इंटॉलरेंट and we should know why 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 we are uh, talking on this particular aspect because the epidemic there is a epidemic of obesity diabetes as well as gdm every fifth women in india or every fourth women in south east asia may have some form of hyperglycemia in pregnancy almost 80% of them are going to be gestational diabetes around 9% are going to be pre existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes and could be around 10 or 11% Uh, are are the cases of dip which are never tested it before or over diabetes and these children of diabetic mother are likely to become obese and diabetic in the future life and that is we have we have to have concern to protect not only the mothers but also these children who are likely to have non communicable diseases in their adult life so it's not just to have a good neonatal outcome but also to have the good environment intrauterine environment in the baby and this is the intergenerational vicious cycle that if you diagnose diabetes early maybe pre just maybe the 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 uh, the early gdm itself if it is being diagnosed in the first trimester certainly you have not missed out the targeting the intrauterine environment even in the first trimester and why it should be done see if you have a baby uh, uh, so someone who's obese becoming glucose intolerant delivering a baby who is again macrosomic and this baby again becomes a, if she is a girl becomes a mother there there is a intergenerational transmission to the next generation and this we have to cut cut down by diagnosing them early and and treating them early if your first trimester hyperglycemia this has been shown to you you have a effect on high, high organogenesis and that is at most important now if you just talk about the prevalence of diabetes among these men uh, among these women so uh, almost uh, for up to for, for 49 years of age you can say child child bearing age which is uh, almost uh, say 10 to 12 10 to 12 percent similarly type 1 diabetes we are in the, on the top and it's a challenge for us this is a global prevalence which i told you around 16.7 percent and if you talk about south east asia it's almost every fourth women and the prevalence uh, uh, of hyperglycemia pregnancy goes on increasing now this is a recent data of 2006 which again says that the that the pre diabetes diabetes dyslipidemia hypertension obesity there are all the risk factors of of obesity and this is the prevalence of obesity in in in, in from the icmr study which is generalized or abdominal obesity which again becomes almost every fourth uh, women is likely to have obesity but this is a very promising figure which i got just uh, today uh, morning from one of the uh, 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 one of the post 30 years this is the uh, this is a government data that under 11% of the women of 40 to 49 years group have kids be beyond 40 uh, 40 in 1921 while 30 years ago this figure was 23 that means now our women are getting little skilled and now they are getting pregnant earlier than they were getting pregnant before 19 2019 the median age at the time of birth of indian women declined by around 5 years from 33 to 28 years which is again a positive sign for all of us to have less number of glucose intolerance in pregnancy 35% of the women surveyed in 1992 to 93 finished bearing child age by 30 but 2019 20 the figure went up to 64% so that's a good sign that our women are little conscious on this line now as i talk about the the definition earlier the definition was glucose carbohydrate intolerance of varying degree of severity with onset or first recognition during pregnancy so irrespective even if the hbavc is high even if the fasting is more than 120 even if the post glucose is more than 200 you will call it as gestational diabetes and that was a flaw in the definition but in 2019 the definition was changed now we say gdm diagnosed in the second or the third trimester of the pregnancy that means uh, 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 after 16 after 13 weeks 
that was not clearly over diabetes is called as GDM. So they have little differentiated between differentiation between the between the pre-gestational diabetes and gestational diabetes. And this figure guidelines in 2015, which you have seen it, that dip diabetes in pregnancy. Can I have a mark? I, I don't know. You you have a laser pointer here. So you have a category which is called a dip diabetes in pregnancy. Either you are known type one or type two, or you are diagnosed for the first time. As, uh, as, as hyperglycemia which is matching the pre-existing diabetes so they are now categorizing as dip so when you talk about the pre-gestational diabetes you talk about dip but when you talk about early GDM it could be either dip or it could be a gestational diabetes so there's a clear but when it comes when it turned out to be a pre-existing diabetes or overt diabetes then they have to be treated as pre-gestational diabetes and we should not be waiting for two weeks of medical nutrition therapy directly going for insulin but if it is like gdm say 140 170 180 something like this after after the glucose then they should be treated as egdm like you get either gdm in the second and the third trimester so developed countries earlier the screening was only for the on, uh, uh, high risk patient then the universal screening came and uh, then a screening of egdm now we are pro uh, progressing little further but if you talk about dipsy we are ad advocating going for universal screening almost uh, 20 years from now to, to whether it's 1999 then we have a we have the first paper in 2006 uh, 2006 with the recommendation and 8 14 and uh, 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 and 18 and 23 so uh, universal screening in India has been advocated for every woman who is coming to the clinic for the first time so the recommendation is 24 to 28 weeks but the data from Dr. Sheshaya in 2007 says almost 42 percent of these women have been diagnosed before 24 weeks of pregnancy out of that before 16 weeks almost 17 percent of these women who have been diagnosed as gdm have been diagnosed in the first trimester or uh, uh, before 16 weeks of pregnancy so this very important figure that 40 percent of the total gdm are diagnosed before 20 before 24 weeks and that is why we should not be sticking to the criteria of 24 weeks now contrary to our belief gdm uh, and dggt was that is borderline case of 120 to 140 was more common in the in the younger age the majority of 20, around 76 percent of the women were diagnosed after 24 weeks but in other data around 25 percent of these were diagnosed before 24 weeks so there is a global burden of this egdm and there's a paper which has uh, which is actually a compilation of around 58 studies and they have they have come out with a conclusion that the prevalence is very drastically there's a big difference from one percent to almost 37 percent the indian data says that 40 40 percent of them they are diagnosed in the below 24 years of uh, 24 weeks of pre pregnancy similarly other data also says our own data also has shown that almost 17 to 18 percent are diagnosed before 12 weeks of pregnancy so we have still we have to do a lot of work and the uh, the recommendation also says that we have to have more rcts on these lines Early GDM is associated with worse pregnancy outcome compared with GDM diagnosed at 24 to 24, uh, 8 weeks of pregnancy and that is what is the concern and this, this data has, sh uh, has shown that there is to see the, whether it is caesarean injection, PIH or uh, PET or uh, uh, PPH all of them seem to be on higher side, HbA1c was found to be on a higher side, neonatal outcome if you see here uh, they have been shown that uh, that that uh, it was statistically significantly uh, uh, worst worse in in pay in women who have uh, diagnosed before 24 weeks versus 24 uh, 28 weeks. This is the neonatal outcome, which the odds ratio of PIH stillbirth, LGA, NICU admission was quite high, almost two percent, which is statistically significant. And it it has it has come out with a with a uh, with a co uh, conclusion that women with early GDM had significantly higher risk of having pregnancy-induced hypertension, postpartum hemorrhage, P postpartum glucose abnormalities, and their offsprings are at high risk of having premature delivery, stillbirth, LGAs, and need intensive uh, uh, neonatal uh, uh, admission, neonatal ICU admission. Early versus the late GDM. Now this is a wonderful data. But they have compared fasting, di they are diagnosed early GDM by fasting blood glucose of more than 92. And then they have compared the mid-pregnancy which was diagnosed by GTT. Now possibly I, we will not be able to accept in India because we are postprandial hyperglycemic individuals and we cannot compromise post-glucose test at all. And we can't just rely on fasting blood glucose of 19 and uh, 92. 
But this particular data has compared those who are diagnosed with fasting 92 and those who have been diagnosed in the sec mid pregnancy with OGTT. And what the comparison says, uh, uh, they, they were a little obese, the family history was positive, uh, then there was a, a chronic hypertension was more common in these women who have diagnosed with uh, in the first trimester. Uh, and even uh, the fetal malformations seem to be a little higher and uh, uh, and uh, if you just see the, see the neonatal outcome in, in, in these individuals in the early versus late, the stillbirth uh, is okay, but the delivery mode was more caesarean sections and uh, and uh, post postpartum evaluation again has shown that the, there is there is more number of uh, women who remained little hyperglycemia after delivery. And the conclusion was diagnosis and treating GDM after an early fasting blood glucose of more than 92 is controversial in the literature. In our cohort of women diagnosed using this threshold, early treatment resulted in similar neonatal outcome compared to women diagnosed later in the pregnancy. This again suggests we have to have more data to really endorse this, but things are very, very clear. Any abnormal value of more than 120, which is a target, even in the first trimester has to be focused on. Though the neonatal outcome seems to be okay, but we all, all know that we have epigenetic changes which might be might be problematic in these individuals who are born. So we have to have a long-term data available now after maybe 10 or 15 years, those who have been born uh, with first trimester hyperglycemia versus those who have been born with the second trimester hyperglycemia, the offspring of diabetic mother. And this is a, a paper in, from Diabetes Care. And this is a wonderful paper. What they have done is they have compared type 2 DM, those who were diagnosed less than 12 weeks, 12 to 23 weeks, and more than 24 weeks. And uh, I'll just directly show you the, the, uh, the, the GDM, uh, the, the type, uh, the, the various types of treatment strategies. Insulin requirement was higher if you are diagnosed early. Maximum dose requirement was higher. Gestational insulin, uh, uh, insulin requirement went for, uh, ahead. And the, uh, and, the, uh, and the OGTT values were higher and the HbA1c was also higher. So a statistically significant difference between the group as the pregnancy advanced, uh, those who are diagnosed early or those pre-existing type 2 diabetes require higher the doses. And these were the, uh, uh, these were the maternal outcomes, which again, whether it's uh, age, the preterm delivery, caesarean section, hypertensive disorders, everything seems to be higher. Neonatal outcome, macrosomia, large for gestational age, uh, neonatal jaundice and respiratory distress syndrome was seem to be significantly higher in those individuals who have a diagnosed and, and here it is it is it is less than 12 weeks and uh, and type 2 diabetes which matches more versus after 12 weeks and the results were the conclusion were despite early testing and, and current best practice treatment early gdm in high risk women remains associated with poor pregnancy outcome outcomes for those in whom gdm was diagnosed at less than 12 weeks of gestation approximated those seen in the pre-existing diabetes so if it is less than 12 weeks the neonatal outcome the insulin requirement seems to be almost similar early gdm and update this is a recent uh, this is another article uh, which was again uh, the, the those treatment of of booking gestational diabetes mellitus they they have uh, this uh, uh, the, the, the was it was a rct and uh, what they have done is uh, they have just diagnosed these women in the first and the uh, and the next trimester and what they have come is in india where the burden of hip is high the findings from tobog gm study further emphasizes the need of a screen of gdm in the first booking uh, GDM in by pregnancy early, late, and non-recurrent uh, GDM. So those women who already had GDM, what are the chances of having GDM in the subsequent pregnancy? So conclusion: GDM shows a high recurrence rate in the cohort, slightly overwrought women with early GDM. So first trimester, first pregnant GDM, it was possible in the second trim, third trimester. The second GDM is possible in the second trimester, and maybe the third GDM it will be in the first trimester. So something like this has been observed from this study, very unique study of this kind. Our own data possibly last one or two slides here. Our own data, which is now unpublished, around 813 pregnancies. If you see this, which has been highlighted at the, at the bottom, whether you are diagnosed in the first trimester, whether you are diagnosed in the second trimester, or whether you are diagnosed in the third trimester, you, the, the, the differentiation between diet requirement versus insulin requirement is almost similar. So our data of 800 per pregnancy did not differentiate that if you are diagnosed early with the diagnosis of GDM, you will be requiring insulin more. That is another contradictory picture here. 
if you just see the percentage, 13.5% of these 800 women were diagnosed in the first trimester, 36% in the second trimester, and remaining 50% were in the third trimester. So there's another area of food for thought for all of us. If you just treat a woman as they come in the first trimester with an effective manner, whether it's a diet or insulin, the neonatal outcome is going to be comparable. So to conclude, the observational studies have shown conflicting results as to whether a screening and the treatment of GDM is in early is beneficial. However, most of the studies have shown that the women with early GDM are at high risk of adverse neonatal outcome. A slight majority of the relevant observation studies have reported an improved pregnancy outcome by the treatment of early GDM. So far, RCTs have not provided the conclusive evidences of, of beneficial effect of early GDM, early treatment. Evidences for large RCT is urgently needed. Also, evaluating the lower risk of population, lower lower risk population to determine appropriate eGDM uh, OGTT threshold. Uh, that what should be the cutoff. But for India, I feel DIPC is very very clear that every person, woman coming to the ANC clinic at the first given opportunity, preferably in the first trimester, at the time they, of the first visit, they should be subjected for OG, uh, GCT. And if it is positive then whether it's overt or whether it's, it's EGDM, please treat it at in a most aggressive manner and give the best intrauterine environment to these children. So maybe by 2047, when we complete 100 years of independence in the country, we should be focusing ourselves as stop diabetes or, or maybe we should not have any new case of diabetes that time. In after in, in 100 years of maybe around 20 years, 25 years from now, because now we are we are going ahead with the primordial prevention and not the primary or the secondary prevention of diabetes. So RCTs are required for this. And that's why there's a message for 10th of March is a national GDM day. I always remind everyone that uh, our India is the only country in the world who has declared uh, one of the day uh, for GDM awareness. That's the birthday of Professor Sashiya. And we should all be encouraging our, our fraternity, whether it's OBGYs or whether it's physicians, whether it's nutritionists, to, to have good awareness across the country, across all the corners. This is a, uh, again a, a, a message from Professor Shia, focus on the fetus for the future. And that is how we should be aggressive at EGDM or it's, it's pre-existing diabetes or type 1 or type 2. Both of them should be aggressively treated. And if you treat them well, the results are going to be almost neonatal outcome is going to, going to be almost similar but if you miss it out in the first trimester then you might we might face trouble it's your turn now as the charity begins at home so every one of you should be aggressive on these lines with this i stop here again this is my repetition of this slide every time that never ever celebrate any of the occasion whether it is national gdm day or whether it's your birthday, or whether it's a word diabetes day no, 14, on 14 November, or whether it's an anniversary, or whether it's the, it's the inauguration of the fifth uh, PSG uh, summit. We should always cut the fruit and not the cake and give a strong message to the community that st start consuming fruits more often than cake. Thank you, thank you very much for patience listening.